Hello, everybody. It's Liv Akpone and Ashley Titians. We are here in Portland, Oregon. Yes, and I am super excited to be here. I don't know about you. I'm pumped. And why are we here, Ashley? Well, we are here for the Nike Cross Country Nationals, Woo! which is one of the biggest high school cross country national championships in the country. It is the 18th year, I believe, of NXN. Yes. And so I know we are super excited to see some of the best high school athletes compete here tomorrow in Portland. It's gonna be exciting. It's not November anymore. No, but it's December and hey, we still got some great cross country racing going on. So Liv, what are we gonna do here today to kind of preview this? We're gonna break down the top storylines going into these championships for both the boys side and also the girls race as well. Highlighting all the great things. We have to talk about the weather. We're here in Portland. So many great things to come. So why don't you come along with us? Are you looking for a delicious and nutritious snack that packs a real protein punch? Crack into a good source of protein with tasty, healthy, wonderful pistachios. Each one ounce serving of wonderful pistachios contains six grams of protein, giving you over 10% of your daily value. It's one of the highest protein nuts out there. But that's not all. Pistachios are also known for their fiber and better for you, unsaturated fats, which may help keep you feeling fuller longer. And the best part, wonderful pistachios comes in a variety of flavors and sizes, perfect for enjoying with your family and friends or taking them with you on your adventures. So whether you're dropping off the kiddos or running in between meetings, fuel up with healthy and tasty snack. Wonderful pistachios will be your new go-to snack. Check out wonderfulpistachios.com to learn more about how these little green wonders can power up your day. All right, we're sitting at the 1K mark, the first hill on the Glendevere Golf Course in Portland, Oregon. Ashley, as you can see, like it's a complete mud fest right now. Yes. Based off the weather, it started raining a couple days ago here in Portland, and it's just going to continue throughout the weekend. I don't think it stops until like next week Thursday. So, <laughs> high percent chances of rain. That's to be expected. I literally have my rain boots on. You have your your Nike shoes. shoes on. Yes. And it's gonna be a mud fest. But also like when you think of NXN, right? I think of mud fest, you know? Yeah. Like it's Portland, it rains all the time. I can't think of how many times where I mean shoot, think back to Nico Young when he won here, I believe in 2019, and it was just I mean, it was a slog fest out there just running through all the mud. So I feel like this is kind of typical, you know, not to be unexpected here in Portland, but it's definitely gonna make things interesting in terms of how these athletes decide to attack this race. Yeah, absolutely. And I know we're gonna dive into the individuals and the teams in a little bit. I'm just thinking about there's this is a national meet, so you're getting all the top competitors from all over the state. Some of them are used to competing in these conditions. I know there's some teams like uh, Jesuit and Lincoln on the girls' team side. They are literally right outside Portland. They're used to these conditions. And then we have teams that are from Texas, and I'm like, how are they going to fare with the rain and the and it's cold? And I'm probably very overdressed, but if you guys know me, I like to bundle up. It's probably what, like 50? Yeah, and I believe right it's going to be around that same time track yeah. tomorrow in the 40s or there, you know, when this race starts in the morning. And let's just hope, fingers crossed, that the conditions don't worsen overnight because it is going to continue raining overnight and into the morning today, or tomorrow morning. So we'll have to see how it goes. Absolutely. All right, Ashley, we're at a very key point of the race. Yes. We're at the hairpin turns. Yes. And they do this twice. Yes. How pivotal, like, I feel, I'm just looking at it, and it's like super sharp turns. One thing about it too, we just talked about how it's gonna be super muddy here tomorrow. Like this is a place where if you look back at some old NXN footage, you can see people slipping and falling as they're trying to make this turn. So this could be a key part, you know, early on, and then about just after halfway through the race where you can see potential moves being made. Yeah, exactly. Let's go ahead and start diving into the girls' field. Yes. I'm very excited about this. Yes. I feel like there's so many top contenders that are gonna be lining up here on Saturday and looking to put their best foot forward. I know for me, I personally see Rachel Forsyth of Ann Arbor Pioneer from Michigan really taking this out really strong. She has won 11, like she's just been undefeated this whole season, but has 11 straight sub 17 5K performances to her resume. And I think one of the conversations that we were having is, this is an individual who I feel like has not been challenged yet this Correct. season. So now I feel like this is gonna be her first time having that really high level of competitors and challengers. I'm, 
you know, I, I'm curious to see how she's going to react to having those competitors. I by agree her now. because she is a rich fourth size. She is the the top ranked runner at 5K so far this season. I believe she's run 1607.5 yes. this fall. But like you said, a lot of those came in just solo efforts, and so this is going to be the time where she's really getting all the best runners in the entire country and finally going out to compete against them. It's her first ever NXN race as well, so I'll be excited to see how she responds to that challenge. Now, speaking of 1607, Elizabeth Leishman, <laughs> yes. by two tenths of a second, is the second fastest girl right behind Rachel Forsythe at the 5K distance. She's from Texas, so again, we talked about earlier how we're like, how are the Texas, how are the Texans going to fare on this course, especially with the rain and it's going to be cold. I see some arm sleeves probably coming out for the race on Saturday, but Elizabeth Leachman has been on our radar. We had a chance to watch her for a workout Wednesday, conquer the Michigan. Man. Oh my gosh, she was so moving. She's what are your thoughts on just a little bit? So I feel like Leishman's again, kind of like Rachel Forsyth. She's one of those that like, she's going to get out early and she's going to go all guns blazing. Now she's going to be a matter of who's going to go with her. Will anyone go with her? Because it's kind of a similar situation where she hasn't really been in a race where someone's gone out with her like that before. But Elizabeth Leishman's a very confident racer, I feel like. And so I'm excited to see how she does. She, Like you said earlier, she's also run 1607 this season, the US number two in the 5K. So I definitely believe that her and Rachel Forsyth are the two top competitors going into this race. Now I must have to throw, I have to throw this athlete into the mix, Emily Wisniewski. I feel yes. like this is her horn. I want to say home course because she's from Crescent Valley. She is from Oregon. Yes. So she's used to these conditions. She's used to running out here. That has to come at a huge advantage for her. And also, too, she's had her best season of her career yes, already this fall. And I mean, I believe she she broke the Oregon State record, I think, and she's won some Oregon titles. And I'm just really excited. Like, this is her year, you know? And I think you're right. Like, it's kind of like that home field advantage, not as much travel. Um, so I think I'm really excited to see what she does here. Are there any other ladies that you're looking forward to uh, seeing? I want to say one more. Watch out for the eighth grader, yes! from New, New Mexico. Mexico. Can I talk about this girl for a let's second? Get, let's I, dive into it. I feel it. like she just she just rose onto the scene out of nowhere. Yeah. I don't know how you feel about that, but I mean, she went to the New Mexico Cross Country Championships just about a month ago, and she she shocked the field and clocked 16.58 to win that title there. And then she also won the NXR, I believe, Southwest title, um, beating you know taking down Heavy some really names. top competitors. Heavy names. So I mean, shoot, anything can happen on a day, especially when you have conditions that you're expecting tomorrow, like with the mud and the rain. So I would definitely not, you know, count her out. I feel like we also have to talk about some Colorado athletes as well. A big name comes into mind, Addison Ritzenhine. I know our friend Bobby Reyes from the Colorado Mile Split team. He has said from the very, I remember the very beginning, getting a text from him and he's like, look out for Addie Ritzenhine. I'm like, all right, cool. And cool. she, I was in the beginning, I was like, all right, yeah. cool. Whatever, Bobby, I got you. But then as the season unfolded, I was like, no, Bobby's right. Yeah. I feel like Addie Ritzenhine is an athlete that we need to keep our eyes out for. And on top of that, she's not only competing for herself, we're gonna dive into the team titles in just a little bit and those contenders, but she's also running for her team. And one thing about Ritzenhine, last year she clocked her 5K PR here on this course. So she likes this course. She's gotta like it, you know? She, she ran her it. PR here last year, and so I'm excited to see what she does. But I wanna throw out a couple more names. Yeah, go ahead. Her. Okay, no, we're good. Sadie Engelhart. Uh, that was the next name. I was like, we have to talk about our girl Sadie I feel like, Ventura. okay, especially on the girl side, there's just so many names. There's the so mix, many. But yeah. it's hard to go through them all, you know? So yeah, you gotta throw Sadie Engelhart there. She's been in championship level races her you know since the get-go since middle school yeah yeah um, so i definitely think she's someone else to watch out for that could contend for a top spot yeah i agree and sadie has just been on a whole nother level right now and she has been consistently just putting her name out there again running since she's been in middle school breaking aau junior olympic records left and right setting age group records of course really stepping up to the plate and this is her first time competing at nxn as well Correct. so this is gonna be a new environment for her, but again, from California, just one state over. So I feel like she is in a great spot to potentially grab this championship title. But okay, I guess after we go through all that, bottom line, it's gonna be fast. It there's is a lot of, There's a lot of players. A lot so of players. We're excited to see how the individual race will shape up. Ashley and I are now on the back end of the golf course. Yes. which is where champions start to build. We're seeing right. the grit, determination. And what I like about this, Bobby Reyes, who's doing a great job of recording us right now, he said not many fans are on this backside, so you're kind of running 
by yourself, essentially. It's all a mental game at that mental point. Mental game. Mm -hmm. So, with all that being said, I feel like this team race is going to be all mental. There's a lot of talented individuals and teams, but specifically, we're going to have an interesting team race. Yes, yes. We have two teams from Colorado, Niwot and Air Academy, going head to head. They've been, they've been fluctuating in our rankings like throughout the whole, the whole year. Yeah. Throughout the whole year, as they should have, because they both had really strong performances. I know you're cheering for Niwot. I'm holding it down for the cadets over here. Well, let's cheer for the cadets. Let's so break this down let's here. Let's break it down. Yeah. Niwot. Okay, so how are they going to win this exactly? I mean, if you're looking at Niwot, right, they've just been really consistent, especially in the postseason, right? They like easily won their Colorado State meet. And now what they've really, you know, what we've heard is what they've really been focusing on is making sure they're peaking and at their best fitness and, you know, best health for NXM because they want to win this. Last year in 2022, they finished second at this race. If you go back to 2019, they finished third, I believe. And then back in 2018, they finished fifth. So it's so kind of like a always, natural progression. And they've always been there. Yes, that's right. That's exciting. So now it's like the natural progression isn't first the last thing they got to do now. And so this could be the year. Um, it, but you're right. They have been competing with Air Academy, you know, all season long. If you're looking at the last time any state has had you know, teams go one, two at NXN. I believe it was 2012, and that was when FM went number one, and then Saratoga Springs finished second there. So we could see something pretty historic. Exactly. And I know you mentioned Niwot won their state championships. Air Academy also won their state championships as well. They're in two different divisions, so they didn't really get to face head on at states, but they did compete at NXR against Correct. each other. Niwot had the better day, Air Academy right there. But when you look at the overall like team of Air Academy, they have the number one team average in the country right that now. That is true. So that's why I'm like, come on, Air Academy, let's do this, right? And I feel like I'm going to talk about one specific individual, Bethany Mahalik. I feel like she's the key player for this team. And the reason being is she hasn't had the most consistent season, but I'm really crossing my fingers if we if we can see history repeat itself. Yes. Similar to last year, right? Kind of up and down, typical cross country season. But then at NXM last year, she finished third. She's the top one of the top returners mm -hmm. going into these championships. And I feel like if she can just have like the race of her life and help lead Air Academy, oh my gosh. It's gonna be an exciting race. They also have Tessa Walter, who's a really strong competitor yep. as well. So I'm not kind of counting out Air Academy. But as we mentioned, you, you said Saratoga Springs. Yes. They have returned. That's Defending right. champions. You know, it's been an interesting up and down year, I feel like, for Saratoga oh, Springs. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. think at the beginning, there were some questions like, you know, what's this year gonna be like for them? But as we've seen over the past month or so, they've really started to ramp it up here. Their leader, Emily Bush, has had probably the season of her life on yes. the cross-country course, and so she has a lot of momentum going into these championships. And hey, we all know the history of Saratoga Springs here, and this history of the state of New York here at NXN, and they just win here, you know? It's like, it's a course and conditions that really play well to what they're used to, I think, running in the Northeast. And so, even though they're not, you know, they're our top ranked team and maybe isn't the favorite going into this, you definitely can't count them out. Yeah. I know Corey mentioned before we even arrived here, he's like, hey, look at the conditions. Like, this is all in favor of Saratoga Springs. True. They're yeah. from New York. They're used to running in the rain. It's literally drizzling right now. Um, they're used to running in the rain. They're used to running in the cold. It's in the Blue Streak's favor. So that's why I'm like, I'm not counting out Saratoga Springs. And with Emily Bush, as you mentioned, having the season of her life right now, what a better way to end your senior year exactly. by leading the blue streaks to another back-to-back -back title. Now, I know there's also some other teams in the mix here. Let's talk about Jay Sarah. Jay Sarah has been yes. that team from California yes. that I'm like, okay, they have really proved themselves I this season. I think they were a team like coming in. I don't know exactly how good we thought they were gonna yeah, be. Yeah, it was a huge question mark. And the thing is, they're deep. They have they're a lot deep. of depth. Yes. And they've shown that in you know every meet they competed in. I mean, they had a great performance at the California State Meet. They you know they were the best team when you did the, the State Meet merge for CIF. And yeah. so they're, I believe, our third ranked team yeah, going third into ranked this. Team. And yep. so I would definitely expect them to be up in the mix. But then as well too, you know, you have some teams from this home state competing yes. here, you're gonna have Lincoln, you're gonna yep. have Portland Jesuit. Jesuit. Yep. Um, and so those are also gonna be ones contend you know, contending for titles. So as we said about the individuals, similar to the teams, it is staffed. Exactly. It's gonna be sizzling hot, fire breathing dragon type environment out here in Portland. The umbrella has come out because it's now starting to rain. <laughs> of course, this is what we get in Portland for this time of year. As we mentioned, the girls' race is just going to be completely stacked and loaded on the individual and the team side, and it's just as equally as competitive on the boys' side. So let's start with the biggest headliner, 
Danny Simmons. Danny Simmons. That's all I have to say. Exactly. I mean, can he be stopped? I think that's really the question going in to NXN this year. He is the top returner from last year. He finished second, I believe, last year to Aaron Solomon, who won this race from Newbury Park now at NAU. And, you know, Danny Simmons, he is a BYU commit. Yes. Um, you know, he's been, like I said, dominant all season, undefeated, runs for American Fork. So he's not only running for the individual title, but he's running for that team title, too, because American Fork is one of the top favorites. But, like, what's the what's the script, I think, if you're going to take down Simmons, who did really well in this course last year? Kind of what he did last year is, you know, it got out pretty hard. But he kind of let all the carnage unfold underneath him. And then go, going up the hill, you know, the last, like, you know, little bit I mean he just passed so many people so I wonder like if, you know keeping that in mind like how do you take down Simmons I think that's a great question I think about last year's race right like we had Newberry Park you had Lex and Leo Young you had um, Aaron Salmon in this mix too there were a lot of big names mm -hmm. I feel like this year he's one he is the top returner yeah he is that he is like the Lex and Leo Young's going into these championships I feel like he's just gonna kind of go out exactly and just run it there's no really hanging out in the well maybe in the beginning like mm -hmm. hanging out with the pack yeah. But this is a completely different race than what it was in 2022, and I feel like he's the one with the target on his back. Everyone is trying to keep up with Simmons. Very true, and I feel like then for the guys that are, you know, behind him, like looking to take down Simmons, like I feel like there's just so many different players. Yeah, you yeah. know, I just I can think of so many names that come to come to mind. You have Nathan Neal from Bozeman in Montana. He won that NXR Northwest title, I believe, in 1432, which I believe is a big PR for him there. And so he's going to be one of those favorites. Been very consistent all year long. You're also going to have Byron Grievous um, of Phillips Exeter Academy out in New Hampshire. And he's also been one where I think people are just, you know, he's running off tough courses up there in the Northeast. And yeah. I think a lot of people have eyes on him as someone that could come into this race and sneak up on everyone and could potentially grab this win. Um, and then there's just, again, so many different names. You have Robert Matura from Minnesota, who's had probably the year of his his life yeah. you know, running here. He was someone that I don't think a lot of people had eyes on going into the season. And just, the, again, so many names. So many names. And I have to throw this, this guy out there. We can't forget our guy, Clay Shively. Okay, Kansas guy. I know I'm, I've been like, so intrigued and so invested in his journey to nationals. He, at one of the earlier meets of the season, he told us in his post-race interview that he's looking to grab that NXN title. And I feel like he has just like pushed himself so much this season that I feel like he's also gonna be in this top mix as well. He barely, I was like, goodness gracious, got a little nervous, finished fifth in his regional meet. Um, but he set a personal best there. So I'm curious about how he's gonna respond coming from Kansas here to compete. It's gonna be a good one. And of course with CBA's uh, Joe Barrett, I feel like he also is a guy that's gonna be in this mix as well. I'll throw in one more guy too, Cameron Todd. Cameron Todd! <laughs> a yes! A Jesuit yes! in Indiana. He's an Indiana State champion. One, I, uh, you know, he won his region, I believe, for NXR. And again, he's someone that I think comes in and he just races really well on the championship stage. I believe last year, for example, going into Foot Locker, um, he was someone that maybe wasn't on anyone's radar and he finished very well. I believe he finished top 10 there. So now I think that's, you know, it's kind of the same, same situation. He just races really well in the postseason. So I think you can't come out either. You can't come out. And if you look, we're at the 4K mark here. Last 1K, this yes. is a very strong moment so we're going to approach this last hill. This is where the champions will have to dig really deep, and it's going to be that final stretch to the finish. All right, we're out here at the course. All the athletes are out here, and we are able to grab some of the top teams and individuals here and get some quick on-the-fly interviews, get their thoughts going into NXN tomorrow. And we are here with one of the fastest girls in the nation, Elizabeth Leishman, a born champion, or Bernie champion, excuse me. Elizabeth, how are you feeling? I'm feeling good. I'm excited yeah. to come out here and race this tomorrow. A good course. Now it's a little muddy. I don't know. We were like running around the course, kind of slipping and sliding. What are your thoughts going into that? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely going to be a little risky, maybe a couple falls, but I think if we can get past that, it's going to be a fun challenge to have. Now you've been on a tear all season long. What are you hoping to do tomorrow? And you know, what do you think it's going to take? Yeah, I think tomorrow I really just want to go out there and compete to the best of my ability on a different kind of course with a different level of competition and. You know, however that plays out, I think as long as I give it my best, I'll be happy with that. Nathan Neal here at NXN. How are you feeling going into the championships tomorrow? Yeah, I'm feeling confident. Um, yeah, I'm ready to go. I, the course looks it's, it's in good condition for the conditions. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm ready to go. The, the pyramid's feeling good. Um, yeah. <laughs> what are you looking forward to? Um, I'm looking forward to competing. I mean, I haven't been in a lot of races this year. Um, there's been a lot of guys through the entire race. and. 
I mean, I'm, there's definitely going to be a lot of people um, at the front through the entire race. And so I'm just, I'm just ready to um, have a really good race and compete against some really solid athletes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, we're here with Ventura's Sadie Engelhart, who you just told me you're feeling the best you've ever felt going into championships. Can you explain a little bit more about what that means to you and how you're feeling? Yeah, it's awesome. Um, I haven't felt this good ever, um, you know, in like December or late November. So yeah, I think I'm ready to rock. I think um, this course is awesome. It, you know, just from running it today, I think it's great. And um, it's gonna be gritty for sure. So uh, I'm ready to compete and yeah, it should be fun. All right. We are here yes. at the Double Hill, which I did not know existed. I saw this one, Ashley ran it, I walked behind you, and then I look up and there's another short, steep hill, well, and this, then there's the finish. Uh, this is right where, you know, you're about to finish, and this is where, pe you know, you make or break your race. Dreams are made or they're broken here, so. You know, Hopefully they're made. Exactly, but this is also where sometimes you see chaos start to happen in these team battles. So I think we should, you know, start to break out down that boys team race because you know there are some heavy hitters here. Yeah, and exactly. And real quick, think about last year. This is where Lex and Leo they got hit with the hill. They did. They did. This is the spot. So make sure you pay attention to this final few meters of this race because it's going to be insane. But back to the team race. American Fork, we saw them at the airport. They were on our flight. <laughs> Bobby our had the flight. honor of sitting next to them um, on our flight here. They're ready to go, Ashley. And I think their mindsets are there. Danny Simmons, as we mentioned, is ready to go. How are we going to be able to take down American Fork? You know, I feel like, you know, obviously they're the favorites, but there are plenty of other teams behind yes. them that I think can challenge as well. But if you're looking at what American Fork has done this season, I mean, they won their Utah 6A state championships. Um, you know, one of the, basically the best team across all divisions at the Utah level at the state championships. And when you have not only a low stick like Danny Simmons, you know, who could likely win this race, but then you have the depth behind you to be able to put together a strong team performance. That's the, really the key there. So it's going to be really hard, I think, to take them down. I was just watching to see if anybody was going to slip. So far, no <laughs> one's slipped. We have the seen people sliding on the course already. So I was just like, I want to make sure no ankles <laughs> were rolled during the courting of this segment here. But yeah, I agree with you. American Fork, I, I feel like, has a lot of heavy hitters sitting right behind them. Harriman, I feel like, is a great team to consider also. You got Bellin Jesuit, CBA, Christian Brothers yeah. Academy from New Jersey, who's just done amazing things. We have more people trying to run this hill here as we're doing this. <laughs> yes. Hilarious. Anyways, I want to talk about Harriman for a second yes, here. Let's, let's gear Again, back. it's it's kind of like one of those situations where, you know, like in the girls' race, you could have, you know, a state go one, two. It yeah, yeah. be the same thing here. Right. And Harriman could, you know, very well win this race, I think, as well. I, they also, I believe, were on our flight coming here, and then afterwards, I believe they came oh. to us or like, should have voted Watch for Harriman. Watch out for Harriman. Yes. Should have voted for Harriman. Yeah. So, but I do feel like they're legit contenders here. You know, Doug Souls, he has been to this meet time and time again, and he knows how to lead a team here. They did really well here last year, and so I definitely think he'll be in the mix. Yeah, I agree. Now let's talk about CBA. I think they're the third, your third, third ranked, team. ranked team right yeah. now. Have done amazing jobs in New Jersey. They won groups, doing great at states. Now. It's time to put it all together here at NXN. How are they going to be able to just stack up against the powerhouses of Utah, like you mentioned with American Fork and Harriman as well? Well, if you're looking at CBA, right, they're also one of those historically dominant powerhouses, yes. especially on the boys cross country side, on that distance side. But if you're looking at what they've done, you know, this year, it's been a special year for them. They've, you know, set some, you know, team records and program records at mm -hmm. various courses in terms of averages and, you know, how they performed at teams at certain meets up in that Northeast region. And so I definitely think they're going to be contenders here. And, you know, they're led, like you said, by Joe Barrett, who's been a great low stick for them. Um, and so they've definitely been one of the more consistent programs this year. Agreed. And last, I don't want to say last but not least, but the next team that comes into mind for me is Bell and Jesuit from Florida. Just really strong team. Again, it's another one of those questions. How are they going to fare? Competing here, there's not many hills happening in Florida. It's definitely the Sunshine State for a reason. Sorry if I'm dropping water on you right now. But... You know, I'm really curious about how they're going to perform here in these conditions. I, yes, I will Ashley. say, though, despite the conditions, yes. they are tough. They are very tough. I want to point out that they not only they ran their Florida State cross country meet, yes. one on a Friday, they then traveled to Cary, North Carolina to Wake Med, 
and two days later on Sunday, they go out and destroy the NXR Southeast you know, team title. They win that there. So they're tough. They are Let's tough. Let's talk about that. They are tough, and they yes. have the depth. Frankie Ruiz is their coach there. He does a great job coaching that team. And, you know, I think we could potentially see them up there within that top three, maybe even win. You never know. Yeah, exactly. So look out for the hills. Look out for this team race because it's going to be stacked and serious. Right. Slip early, sliding all the way to the top <laughs> of the, the finish. Gosh, this is going to be an exciting NXN Championships, Ashley. I'm super pumped for it. I'm pumped. I mean, I think this is my first NXN. I believe it's your first my NXN My very first well. one, too. And, you know, this is the race you always hear about. Like, this is the one of the big high school national championships. And I can see why. It's gorgeous out here. And, you know, we have some of the best athletes in the entire country coming here to compete. The team race is going to be sizzling. The individual races are going to be sizzling hot, too. All around is going to be a great weekend. So make sure you stay tuned to the site for all the coverages because Ashley and I are on the ground with Bobby. Shout out to Bobby for all of his help. And we're looking forward to a great championship. Best wishes to all the teams. And we'll see you out there in Portland.